and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And in other words, it wasn't for Daniel to fully understand. It wasn't for the people of Daniel's time to fully understand. It is for you and I to fully understand, as we are in the end times, uh, starting, I believe, in 1948, when Israel was once again established as a nation. And you had some of true Israel, or some of Judah, who went back to that land of Palestine, and then you had some who were Kenites, some of who called themselves Jews, but are not really Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan, that also uh, returned to or set up residence in that land during that same time. The parable of the fig tree uh, from Jeremiah chapter 24. Um, but... Uh, but uh, and so the the uh, the book here sealed up by Daniel for Daniel, of course, in Revelation chapter five, the one who unseals it, the one who uh, breaks the seals on all seven seals of Revelation, is of course Jesus Christ, he being the one who was worthy to do so. But it's very interesting uh, that uh, this this verse and, and this idea. Uh, people running to and fro and knowledge being increased, uh, this is often taken out of context or interpreted incorrectly by many who would teach prophecy or, or try to comment on the end times and on this book of Daniel. Because many times they'll say, oh, that, that just refers to the the advent of and the uh, the new methods of travel it refers to things like the internet and television and, and scientific discoveries. That's really not what this is talking about. When you look in the original manuscripts in the Hebrew, when it says, many shall run to and fro, what this specifically is talking about is many shall run to and, to and fro in apostasy, or turn about or swerve away, turn aside. Uh, to swerve, to turn aside, to apostatize. And we have the book of, uh, of uh, I mentioned the book of Jude, we have the book of Job in that first chapter where God asked Satan what he was doing and where he had been, and he said, I've been roaming to and fro on the earth. And so we have this same uh, figure of speech, if you will, that Satan uses, and it does mean in the original Hebrew, it does mean to swerve, to turn aside in apostasy. And uh, this word knowledge in the Hebrew, it is a Hebrew word. Uh, I had made a note of it. Uh, I did not, oh shoot, I did not write down the actual uh, Hebrew word. Well, I do have it here. It's Hebrew word 1847. Uh, da'ath and it means knowledge but specifically it means cunning it means wittingly unaware so it is also it refers to you might say a deception a wickedness calamities or wickedness as Bollinger describes it here in the companion bible so interpreted properly uh, this actually says that People will be running to and fro and falling away from God, falling away from the faith, and wickedness and calamities shall be increased. And certainly in these last days, and it's of course written in other places in the Bible, Second uh, Peter, Second Timothy, that, that this would be the state of affairs basically in the end times, that people would wax worse and worse, people would lose their natural affection, you would have scoffers, etc., etc., etc. Verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Uh, these were two angels. As we're going to see, one of them mentioned actually clothed in white linen, these uh, symbolizing righteousness. And uh, at this time, Daniel was still at the, what 
uh, was called a different name uh, in at that time, but which today we call the Tigris River in the region of Iraq. And uh, in verse six, and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? In other words, how long is it, is this tribulation going to last? How long will Antichrist, will Satan, be here doing what he will be doing? Verse 7, And I heard the man clothed in linen, again symbolizing righteousness, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and an half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. In other words, and originally this would have been half the tribulation. Uh, time, uh, a, a time being one solar year uh, in in on God's calendar, which actually is not 365 days, but 360 days. Uh, so a time plus two times, and then half a time. And uh, this actually comes out to 1,260 days, or it also comes out to three and a half years. Again, originally half the tribulation. Now, when you go to uh, uh, Revelation chapter 9, you will see that basically when Satan is thrown out, even though that specifically is referenced in Revelation chapter 12, still it is the act of Satan being thrown out in Revelation chapter 9, you will see that he unleashes, frees the fallen angels that are held in chains, and you will see that these fallen angels, that these locusts, that the locust army, have a period of five months to go about stinging and deceiving people. And that five-month period, I believe, is what Christ shortened the tribulation to, as he did say, and as he did promise, that for the elect's sake, he had shortened the time from that original uh, called a seven-year timetable, seven-year period, or three-and-a-half-year period, uh, three-and-a-half years, specifically, uh, when Antichrist, the last three-and-a-half years, or and now the last, I believe, two-and-a-half months, when Antichrist specifically would be active. Uh, verse 8, Daniel saying, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? In other words, he didn't quite get it. Um, and, and it would have been, no doubt, a, a bit vague to him and many others, uh, as described there. Verse 9, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the wards are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. And again, saying that it's not for you specifically to know, Daniel, it's for those who live during that end time to know. Verse 10, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And so it is that obviously God tests each and every one of us to determine whom he can trust whom he perhaps cannot trust, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to hell, just who he can use and who he can't use. And uh, you will go through trials, you will go through tribulations, you will go through times that you fail. But all of that is designed to purify you and to refine you to the point to, yes, where God can use you, and to where you spiritually mature, to where you want to be used by him, and you're willing to be obedient to however he wishes to use you. Uh, but so it is that, and so it is no doubt that you know, and that you've experienced, and that you see that those who are wicked 
or those who are non-believers that when you say, uh, when you try to point out that we're living in the end times, that they will laugh at you, that they will mock you, that they will doubt you, and that they will basically think that what you've just said is full of nonsense uh, because they have no understanding of it. And uh, But the wise do. Verse 11, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. This actually thirty days longer than the uh, one thousand two hundred and sixty days, or three and a half years, is actually like three years and seven months. It's basically another month. Now, there's a rather complicated uh, uh, equation that some have figured out. And basically, you take the 1,290 days here of Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. You consider the time that the uh, daily sacrifice, the first daily sacrifice was taken away, was at the crucifixion excuse me, of Christ which was 33 A.D. Uh, you consider the abomination that maketh desolate set up, uh, m- meaning that, uh, as has been added in this equation, the time that the last generation began, which was May 15, 1948, that set the clock. Um, you go from 1948 and you subtract 33, and you get 1,915 years. You divide that by 1,290 days, and you get a a figure of 1.484, which uh, basically means one of our our days is equal, or or Daniel's prophetic days equals 1.4, basically almost one and a half of our actual days. And and basically this continues on, in which it basically sets the time in which we're in the season of the end times, not the, not the, uh, obviously not the literal uh, arrival of Antichrist or the arrival of Jesus Christ, but that basically the, uh, the season truly began along about 1981 or so. And it was in 1980 or 1981, interestingly enough, in which Mount St. Helens erupted. And you had in that plume of, of smoke uh, a figure, a, a what looked like a human head or a human face, which some have, have considered to be that of Elijah, uh, whether it is, whether it is not. And again, you don't necessarily want to make a whole lot out of this. It's something that people have come up with. It does roughly set the season, at which time things would really pick up prophetically. Uh, But anyway, verse 12, running out of time here. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. In other words, that you wait the full time period, that you don't get taken out of season, and that you don't run, you don't fall aside to the false messiah. Verse 13, But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. That concludes, uh, finally, the book of Daniel here. I admit I rushed through the end there. I, I rambled, although hopefully everything that I that I rambled about was very relevant and helpful. Um, don't know exactly what the next topic will be yet on the show. Hopefully it'll be a show in which not as much time lapses between shows and between podcasts, but uh, there is a little bit of a different slant coming, at least politically. Uh, Certainly you're still going to get somebody from a Christian conservative perspective, but uh, even this past election kind of opened my eyes to some things, so Perhaps more on that later, but good to finally be back. Good to finish this 12th chapter of Daniel. Everyone take care. Have a great day, a great week, and God bless. You've been listening to American Faith Today. One, two, three, four.
Bye. 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 Bye.